go ahead and hit record. And we're waiting for Tom. So um, Dr. Tom Gimateo, if you don't know Tom, um, he's been, been a friend of his and um, he was a teacher and now we're colleagues and we learn a lot from each other and help each other out um, with people um, to help them get their health back and their lives back. And he's, um, he's a doctor in multiple disciplines. He's a chiropractor, a naturopath, a physical therapist, and he's the co-developer of integrative manual therapy, which is the medical intuitive training, medical intuitive model that I use in um, the 10 years of um, 110 classes and now continued study since um, February of 2000 for me. So one of the things that, that um, he did to help me years ago was started to um, optimize my nutrition. And it's such a um, simple sounding thing, but there's some stuff that's, um, that's real particular that we like to use that um, makes a big difference for people's chronic pains and chronic conditions. And one of the things that's, um, that's important, I feel, is to first not do anything that hurts you. And then if there's something you can do with a simple change of diet, um, then, um, then let's try that first. You know, I think it was Hippocrates that said, make food your medicine. And, and, um, and it's been so big. So if you've been with me, you know that we like um, to put people on a 100% gluten-free diet because it lowers inflammation and um, put people on a processed sugar-free diet because sugar um, acts like a neurotoxin and can um, decrease the immune system. So these days, there's a lot of stuff going on in the, um, in the world. You know, we've got this pandemic thing and this virus thing and so many people are concerned about um, the immune system and people are trying to protect themselves and one of my coaches was um, doing a healing thing to kill viruses and it's like you know I think that's that's somewhat misguided um, you know he's not a medical person so or healthcare professional or alternative healthcare professional so you know it's a common mistake that people make but um, the idea of let's there's a virus and let's kill it um, that's, that's an interesting idea because when you think about it in the dirt, in the air, in our food, on our bodies, in our bodies, right now we are teeming with viruses and bacteria and fungi and all sorts of things that could be called pathogens. And the thing is, if it's in the right place, in the right systems with optimized um, organisms, you know, people and animals with good um, nutrition and good immune systems, then there's a balance. And it's not like there's a bad virus or a bad um, bacteria or a bad fungi. It's like that idea like putting um, antimicrobial soaps on and lotions and always um, doing stuff to kill the 99.9% .9 of things like you see on those labels. That is one way to try to protect yourself, but it's kind of like bubbling up like those you know, back in a long time ago, we had that little kid that was in a bubble because his immune system couldn't handle anything. And it's not about trying to um, protect yourself from every little virus. It's more like um, being so healthy that you're in balance with nature instead of being against nature. So um, even the word antibiotic literally means anti-life. So, so um, what I like to do is, is optimize nutrition. Like, what are we putting in our bodies and, um, and what does it do? And how can we make it um, where at least what we're putting in our bodies, our water, our food, supplements, um, medications for some people, that they're, um, they're useful and they're helpful. And so Tom will be on pretty soon, I'm pretty sure. Sorry, it's taking a little time. He kind of does that. Hey, Mike, good to see you. Leave me your questions. Let me know um, if you have any questions, if you're watching live on Facebook. Just type them in. I actually have a lot of information and I could talk for hours about this. And I might be, if Tom um, doesn't get on pretty soon, he should be on. Sometimes he has trouble getting on. I'm gonna open up my email and just see how he's doing here. But yeah, leave some questions and, um, and I'll start to go through the basics of what I use for nutrition to start with and we'll wait for Tom. Okay, okay. And even I just got, I saw an email from um, a rolfer that works in the same building I am in when I work um, with people in town here in Bellingham. And there's a big encampment across the street um, of more and more homeless people in the park. And the thing is, they just don't have any place to go, right? You know, a lot of people have lost their jobs and their livelihood, and they don't know what else to do. And when I look at those encampments, um, 
they're not destitute people. They're high end tents and these, there is a porta potty there. So they're, they're behaving in a sanitary way, but a lot of people don't have a place to go anymore. And what we're doing in the world right now, you know, you might think about it. Like we're trying to um, kill a virus and protect ourselves from a virus. That is one way to think about it. But you know, what I recommend, if you're interested in, in what we're looking at, you can go right to the cdc.gov, our own Centers for Disease Control website and look around and do searches. And you know, I encourage you not just to read the headlines or the, the little article, but to click through some of the links because there's all sorts of links in there and you can actually read the science and um, see if the science that they're quoting matches up with what they're saying in their article and, and just start to go deep dive into that. Um, Jen and I have been um, researching about two hours a week, each of us two hours a week um, for years actually on um, health matters because um, on food, on vaccines, on supplements, on um, water, on things that can help people get healthy. And so we've been researching and reading peer reviewed research. And that's what I encourage people to do is, um, you know, maybe some of the stuff that we're being told isn't true. And, you know, I've got my opinions and you can always PM me, message me, and I can give you links directly, but you might just start with the cdc.gov and actually start looking through their links and read them because there's, um, it's quite interesting. And they actually tell you a lot of the truth in there, but it's not always in the articles, it's in the links you start to get the, of, you know, read the actual research. And while we're waiting for Tom, I sure hope he gets on because he's got so much information. Oh, here he is, yay. Well, we're waiting for Tom, I'll just give you a little heads up. Um, let's see, I'm gonna see if I can move Tom over. No, I think we're all good. I put us on a meeting this time. And so it's, um, I think it makes it where we can see a little better. Hi, hey. Ralph. Hey, Tom. It is running into my office here. Great. Yeah, I was just telling everybody that um, to do their own research when it comes to nutrition and supplements and medications and um, even that the, the pandemic stuff, you know, the virus thing and the vaccine thing, there's links and um, they can always message me or you and and um, we'd be happy to give them more information, but to do the research. And the story I was going to tell, um, it's just interesting. It's like, who do you believe and how do you know what's true and stuff? One thing is to actually take a look, even from the highest levels of um, our regulatory agencies and our health departments is, you know, recently um, Roundup, that um, um, herbicide was in the news and um, it, the company was bought out by, by Bayer. Bayer bought it from Monsanto. And, um, and then all these lawsuits came up and they lost billions of dollars in lawsuits because um, they found that Roundup was causing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And so, um, so then there was like this big class action lawsuit and it recently got settled for um, billions of dollars, about 10 billion. And they're gonna pay out about a hundred and something thousand people that had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And, but the funny thing is the um, group that was fighting against those people and fighting for Bayer and fighting for Roundup was our own Environmental Protection Agency and our own Department of Justice. So this isn't like conspiracy theory, it's just that's who was fighting against the people. And they did agree, there was an agreement that came up that said $10 billion in settlement for these hundred and something thousand people. When you do the math, it's not that much per person considering they had a severe um, illness. But one of the things our Department of Justice did and our own Environmental Protection Agency was they fought hard and they won so that um, Bayer can continue to sell Roundup and they can sell it without putting a label on it. Like cigarettes, there's, you know, can cause cancer label. Um, they, they, got, they fought, our own EPA fought um, with our Department of Justice to keep the right for Bayer to not have to put anything about um, this cancer causing aspect of Roundup. And um, they even made it where they're not really that liable anymore. There's gonna be a fund set up so that moving forward, anybody that gets hurt from Roundup, um, Bayer does, is not responsible financially. So. So when, I, when I, I say this, because we're being told so many things about um, what to do during the pandemic. And what I encourage people to do is to read, go through and actually look at the peer reviewed science and just start to look, go to cdc.gov and read, don't just read the articles, look at the, the links and read through it. Cause that's what I've been doing for two hours a week for about three years. 
and um, related to vaccines. And now since March related to this current pandemic, just to keep my family safe. So Tom's gonna to talk about optimizing nutrition and, um, and some of the stuff may make a lot of sense, but when you're looking at what to do for your health, one of the things we do is, you know, we look at ingredients. In fact, I even know the ingredients of my shirt. It's hundred percent wool. And I know what to put on my body and what to put in my body. Like I go non-GMO and organic. So when you think of putting a supplement or a medication or um, anything in your body, you might wanna start with the ingredient list and just do a search of what is that ingredient? When it says MX, blah, 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 you know, just Google it and find out, well, what is it? You know, is it something you would drink? <laughs> if it's not something you would drink, you might not want to have it injected. So just thoughts, but I wanted to put that out there because Tom's got a lot of information and um, Hippocrates said, make nutrition, um, make food your medicine first. So I'm going to turn it over to Tom and I'm going to quit talking and hear what he has to say. <laughs> So um, Jeffrey Bland, the father of uh, function, modern functional medicine, um, said that you can change your genetics by 70% by the foods you put in your body. That's incredible. And the relationship of the food, um, because there are uh, patterns in the body and we've over-industrialized our food or made it into man-made things. So they look similar and they act similar but um, because we've manipulated them, they put out another product. Mm. So there's an enzyme called um, light, light pace in, in chemistry. When you put an ace at the end of it, it means an enzyme. So light pace is the enzyme that breaks down fat, lipos, okay? And so you've heard of people having omega-3s, omega-4s, omega-6s, omega-8s, omega-9s, and there are some that naturally occur in medicine. Three, six, nine, twelves are usually um, a way that the body can um, digest them easier and better. And what that means is when you're looking at a fat a molecule, it gets its name because it has so many carbons and so many alcohols on it. And that's described as a, a fatty substance and it makes it so it doesn't like water and things like that. So when you have a fatty chain and the, the alcohol group is actually on the third, that's called an omega-3. When the alcohol group is on the sixth one, it's called an omega-6 and then nine for olive oil type of thing. Those are where the light pace, it's, it's gonna eat it up or break it apart. And so an enzyme cracks it in half and are the two byproducts of that actually good for you? Interesting. So it's like if you had omega-3 and that was the A product, it, would, it goes through the enzyme digestion, it makes a B product and omega-3s are tissue building, non-inflammatory, help repair tissues. And we've heard bad omega-6s uh, are those trans fat things so when that gets cleaved, it actually makes it a free radical in the body and actually causes more inflammation in the body. So um, like you were saying, choosing the right food or knowing, I, I like to say if it wasn't green or couldn't pick it out of your garden, then you shouldn't be really putting it in your mouth type of thing. Um, I know we're halfway through the holiday season, um, but uh, white sugar and uh, diet food is really, really poor for the immune system. We've noticed that the kids do the sugar and they all get still colds. Yeah. And um, I know this is gonna be new to you again, Ralph, but we did talk about this in like 2009, 2010. We found a phenomenon for checking our food and um, seeing how it works in the body. So um, we want uh, to have it uh, sagittal, plane, sagittal plane stimulating. Oh, that makes sense to me. I understand what you mean by that. Yeah. So um, when we talk about integrated manual therapy, we look at mind, body, and spirit. So we also relate the spiritual or uh, life energy of a person on the sagittal directive. I love it. Can you tell people just a little bit about that word? I, I, um, I love that whole idea. So I'm very in, in, um, in that right now. But what is sagittal plane stimulated? 
for regular people? <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in anatomy, they describe different parts of the body and they're all Latin terms. So sagittal means to split somebody straight on the left and the right side. So um, right between the eyes, it's in a direction that means moving forward and backwards, okay? So like your elbow bends, your, your forearm moves in a direction of opening and closing, and that motion's in the sagittal plane, mm -hmm. okay? So um, a little project we could do is if we put our fingers right on in close together at the uh, beginning of our, um, our uh, collarbones, and that's the beginning of the sternum. And um, there underneath that, the anatomy is the thymus gland. So mm -hmm. that's our immune system. So we can let, lightly press on just meet uh, closer to the center on our uh, um, sternum, okay? And when we grab a good, uh, uh, a really good food for our body, it actually move forward a little bit. Oh, interesting. So it would, would it tip forward or just move forward? Tip forward. Or from the top. From the top. Interesting. So. My ginger tea that's organic root ginger and, um, and honey tips from the bottom right now like this. Okay. Right. That's another cleansing motion. But as long as we get some movement here and it moves or feels fluffier, okay. then you can tell that your food is a little bit more healthy. Well, mine gets fluffier and it tilts um, like this. Yeah. Either way, yeah. like this or like this. Is or the, yeah, one or the other. One or the other. Okay. And um, and that kind of fluffiness. Yeah. Okay. So that's saying it's amplifying the sagittal movement of the body. Or the, and that is where your white blood cells hold. That's where we have this memory. This is what they're trying to build up with the virus, uh, the vaccination, yeah. is this memory of this piece. So in osteopathic medicine, they call it the osteopathic thump where you just tap or you pounce, uh, tap the thymus and that squirts out all the white blood cells so they can go work better in the body at the same we use time. That. We do that before we run. Yeah. Little... And yoga's done it for a lot of uh, Eastern uh, movement therapies, touch here and tap here at the same time. But so you can actually grade your food to see if that gets fluffier for you. I love it. That's great. Right. And how is that? You know, you've talked about um, um, mobility testing, which is just seeing how different organs feel and um, the lymph system with um, different foods. Um, is this just another one that you use, or is this like the prime importance one? Or well, it's come up since the last time we talked in the last month. Um, so. in your awareness. It happened about 10 years ago in 2009, 2010, okay. that um, we, the story is that my pug got Lyme, my dog got Lyme disease, and um, she was so sick. Mm. I mean, I had to carry her out to the bathroom and carry her back and we had to hand feed her food. And we noticed that we were, I was making organic chicken soup and feeding it to her and some pieces she would eat and some pieces she wouldn't eat. And we'd go and see the motility, this pumping of the thymus, and she would only choose the ones that were healthy for her. That's cool. So that's when you found it and how you found it. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt, but that, that's really cool. So um, to, uh, last Tuesday night, I was trying to make some homemade chicken soup with all the organic vegetables and stuff. And even I go grocery shop and I put my hand on every piece of chicken before I order it and I feel it. and. It felt pretty good in the grocery store, but by the time I got it home, it all was making this guy shrink. It didn't okay. taste good. I had already made the soup and it was like, a, it didn't feel good. My wife came in and said, that smells bad type of thing. So um, I feel that, you know, if we look at all the chaos going on, we just had Thanksgiving, we're having shortages, people aren't moving product the way they did. so. There may be some questionable practices of food delivery being out there in such a transitional time in our lives. When when you got um, when you have people that some of the people are healers and all sorts of energy workers and practitioners and other people aren't, 
I remember when I was showing my sister um, motility testing and she would put her hand on Crisco and then put her hand on good fat and nutrient seed and then um, you know some good piece of fruit or good water. She could feel the difference and I would have her describe the difference and she could give me a difference, which maybe not was the same words that I used, but she could feel the difference between good and bad food. Um, is it, so that could be a way that somebody might be able to feel like if they just know, oh, this is always good for me. This is always bad for me, um, like NutraSweet versus spring water or something. And, um, and just start to get their own catalog of, oh, this is the good feeling. This is the bad feeling or. Yep, exactly. Okay. That'd be useful. So, um, and test it against white sugar, test it against your candy, test it against your popcorn or your diet soda and you'll probably find that that will pull bad yeah so people could easily feel that if they just practice a little bit and then they can um use it reliably in the store or the market yeah great that's great advice i love that the sagittal plane stimulated and sagittal plane is a very high level energy it's um it's beyond just the physical right it, it really balances mind body and spirit in that direction okay um, and um, we're, uh, you know, we just had an eclipse on the 14th <laughs> that really affected people. And we got this winter solstice coming on before we talk next week. Yeah, it did and, seem like about that time around the 14th, there was, um, I sprained my ankle. There was all sorts of stuff that happened around then. Yeah, so I've had four or five car accidents, which, you know, I get maybe one a year or two a year, but I had four or five of them call up. Uh, a lot of people have been tripping and falling. Yeah, just a little off balance. And and so um, can you can you do this? I mean, I, I know the answer to this for myself, but can you do this even if you don't have the substance or the food or, you know, the um, medication? Can you just think about it or write it down and then just think about it and, and see, will it puff up your thymus or, or make it go not so good? Or what do you think of that? I, I truly like to have the substance there. Okay. I, feel, I feel it's a fairer test, <laughs> but I have trained and I have worked with people that can just go down the menu or hold the thought in their hand to see it and that's more on your your therapies of the matrix learning and everything else where it's helped people get better so i have no um so maybe like if you if you have the thing there definitely use the thing the, the substance yeah. for the food if you don't have it it might be useful to try it and then maybe confirm it again when you have it in front of you like get some right i would prefer to have the actual substance but like you're saying if you're trying to choose one medication or another, a little bit of prayer energy and thought energy is better than, better than nothing. nothing at all into the whole process. So, um, mm -hmm. and you know, when even the purest of uh, Dr. Goodhart, who developed applied kinesiology, he would say you, you'd have to uh, put the supplement in your mouth and taste it, and everything else wasn't good enough. But yeah. since that time, there's been other perceptions out there and other people working in different non-physical yeah. areas and it still brings health. Yeah, and uh, you, just, you do, you you know, yeah, if you don't have access to it, you do it energetically. If you have yeah. access to it, you, you should t test it both ways and just see how your, how your testing is. Yeah. Um, my, so uh, uh, there's, in so, history, it's called, it's called dowsing and there's people that water dows yeah. and then there's people who medically dows. Yeah. And so I want to give you a chance to like um, say anything else you want about like since you've got these ways to test things, what you found that's um that's like I know you wanted to talk about the nutrition and supplements and yeah anything what have you found? What's the question now? But like like, um, I, like um what would what would be um you have these advanced ways to really tune in and see what's good for somebody um and what's good for everybody and what's good only for certain people and um. Yeah, your recommendations for food, supplements, um, getting through this stuff, um, immune system stuff. Um. Yeah, so um, for the holidays, you know, we're in the middle of them. And next week is Christmas. And, you know, we're only a week and a half away from there. And the craziness of the elections, the fear about the vaccinations. I'm feeling for a lot of people, a lot of heartache. Yeah, I know what you mean. And try the best you can. And you know, the first line of defense, which was always the cheapest, 
the four the four elimination diets, right? No gluten, no almonds, no peanuts, and no sugar are your first pieces. But everybody wants to cheat a little bit on that Christmas, you know, ice cream or pie or whatever else. But watch what you're doing to yourself. And um, it's always been a theory of nutrition that since we start almost with Halloween eating a lot of candy, our immune system shot by the middle of July, uh, by the mid of January. And that's when flu season is. Yeah, so some of that flu season might be just the immune system is down, less sun, less outside. Right. And um, get outside, get some really good sunshine, get some fresh air if you can at the same time. Real, real generally, really, really smart and um, and simple things. And then, um, yeah, anything else with um, nutrition that you'd like to see people doing? There's different levels of commitment for people. Right. But, um, so we, we provide really good supplements called GI Regen and Immune Regen, yeah. which still, you know, this far in, I've had two people test positive for COVIDs and their spouses have gotten really sick because they haven't followed the programs and the people on the herbs have just got a little headache, a little swollen nose type of thing, very mild symptoms, but we have not had anybody pass away that's been on any of this or, and even the people that started the symptoms when they, they okay, let me take it now. And it's really helped reverse a lot of those things too. So it's a real simple you, protocol because it's just a couple of little um, capsules. So, yeah. uh, so imtwellnesscenter.com and you can talk to Tom for 15 minutes and get your plan of what would be useful. And he can douse and see yeah. uh, this and that. And Yeah, using any dowsing techniques of uh, seeing what you need um, out there and just be very careful of if you do get a vaccination shot in the future, what we've been, what we do in the clinic, and if you can do it at home is take your vaccination site, let's say it's in my right shoulder, and then do a simple protocol of using, put one hand on the heart, one hand on the uh, belly button, and one hand on the bladder in that sequence. And then the last one, bring the shot arm up to the bridge of your nose. So we do heart, we do stump, belly button, and we do bladder, and then to the bridge of the nose. Um, that will take bring circulation so it could be get dispersed. It can get uh, peed out by using the bladder. And then if there's any fears, you're holding the bridge of the nose will help that. That's great. And um, used to guys you would say 20 minutes, but I know you've been saying less time sometimes. Um, how much time would you recommend them put their hands in those spots? The ideal scenario for no, a person that isn't trained is 15 to 20 minutes like you knew before, Ralph. Um, but sometimes it's easier to do a sequence of 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Um, but it really works if you can hold 15 to 30 minutes, actually. And each time you do it, it's, the body gets used to it and it gets faster and faster in, in the processing. It's kind of like um, taking a tube and doing sucking until the fluid comes out and then it starts to flow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So that, that sequence will always help with any flu shot or vaccination yeah. shot. So any yeah. kind of shots, any kind of, um, any kind of, um, any kind of shots. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I just, right before this, uh, one of my doctors in New York said, I just got the shot. What can I do? Mm -hmm. So I gave that, that pattern out to her. And, and that's really good. The last piece um, to the bridge of the nose to get, um, let go of the fear energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really and, it, and it's to wait and see how the vaccinations are. You know, they, um, the first here, here in Connecticut is doing just the people in the ICUs first and the nursing homes. Um, and I have an infectious disease doctor that I work with up in Maine. And um, so she's giving injections to those people but she doesn't feel like it's, she's like third tier on that. She just walks into the hospital, so she'll wait. And so we'll see how the healthcare people do. You know, yeah. they've been under stress for so long. Um, and there are some reactions happening to it. Yeah, and, and they've only been out, like they've only been doing the trials for just a few months. So um, yeah, we haven't done the usual like wait years to see are there long-term effects of this thing. So that's what yep. Jen and I have been looking at with just reading research of um, just the history of 
drugs and how they're tested. And this one is definitely an experiment. Yeah, a very global experiment. Yeah. And uh, clients have asked me, will, will I get, you know, will I get it? I'm not, you know, I'm know that I got some time to make some more investigations. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I, I really encourage people to go to cdc.gov, our own government agency, and and click through and start to read the actual studies. That was eye-opening for us. Like um, what they say in the headline and what they say in the body of an article is one thing. When you click through some of the, the links, there's links all over the place of like actual peer-reviewed research. When you read the actual study, a lot of times you go, why did they say that in the article? That's not what's in the study. So um, I really encourage people just to start to look because, you know, so many of us in this, um, if they're listening to us, they um, look at ingredients in, on boxes. They know where the, their food was raised. They know if it's GMO or not GMO, if it's organic or not. They know if their clothes are made out of organic cotton or not. You might want to know what the ingredients are of this thing and, and just start to look around at the peer reviewed research. And, you know, don't believe me or Tom, just um, just look, because it's like it's at least as important as what you um, put on your body with your clothes. Yeah. <laughs> That's my advice. Ralph, I have to leave a little bit early today. So well, it's been perfect. a pleasure. Um, yeah, so I want to get everybody, you know, imtwellnesscenter.com. Tom is somebody I've known since February of 2000. And I've taken 110 classes from him and, um, and his team over the years. And we still meet um, regularly for training and, and um, going back and forth with um, information about clients and helping each other out. So, um, so reach out to Tom, imtwellnesscenter.com. Tom, thank you, Tom. Yeah, see you in a week if you can. Okay. And, uh, so good to see you. Bye. I know. Okay, you guys. So that was, um, that was awesome. Really simple, really short. Um, send me any um, questions on Facebook. You can find me on YouTube. And, um, and if you want on our links, you can go to autoimmuneanswers.com. Or if you want to know how I got rid of anxiety, you can go to um, ralphhavens.com forward slash crush imposter syndrome. So good to see you. Let's get out there and heal yourself and heal the world. Take care of yourselves, you guys. <laughs>